Right. So one of uh, the charities in the UK, specifically down here in the South, that is trying to assist asylum seekers is the Southampton and Winchester Visitors Group. And we are fortunate today to have uh, um, part of someone who's part of that uh, charity. We have uh, William Brookhart. Uh, William, welcome. Look at camera, I think. Oh, yes. Okay, shall I get started? Sure. Yeah. I'm just slightly confused about my camera position because I haven't done this before. On the one hand, I want to look at my notes. On the other hand, I want to look at you lot. Yes. So yes. I might be looking a bit shifty all through this as my eyes slide from side to side. But just bear with I, think, I think we all do that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess you can hear me okay. If you can't, please give me a shout. And great. And thank you very much, all of you, for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to, uh, to be able to join your, your coffee morning for, for one morning at least. Mm. So thank you very much. Um, I'm now going to test my knowledge of technology even further by trying to share my screen. I don't know if that's quite uh, There we are. Oops. So, um, so very interesting. Yes. Um, so, okay, so I'm William Brookhart, and I'm a member of uh, Southampton and Winchester Visitors Group. And as it says on my screen, we work with, that sounds a bit intense, but we, we befriend asylum seekers and refugees. Um, so we're a local charity. Um, we have about 100 volunteer members who live mostly around Southampton and Winchester. And what we do is we offer one-to-one uh, -one, um, practical support and friendship to people who are seeking asylum. Um, so SWVG started about 20 years ago. Um, the original members uh, were, you might say, ordinary people uh, living in Winchester who were very perturbed when they discovered that um, refugees were being imprisoned in Winchester prison, so they started visiting them. Um, fortunately now, uh, people seeking asylum aren't kept uh, in Winchester prison quite so much. Uh, they're mostly um, housed in uh, sort of house shares and flats in Southampton. Um, so over the years, SWVG has adapted and we visit people in Southampton. Um, so I joined SWVG about four years ago um, when I retired. I'm a, I'm a civil engineer by, by profession. Um, and that really happened because um, I've been over to Calais a few times with uh, volunteering for a weekend or a few days with uh, Care for Calais um, during the days of the so-called um, Calais jungle where people were living rough and this seemed like a Good way to carry on helping people who had reached the UK. Um, so let's just move to another slide. So what sort of people do we help? Um, where do they come from? Well they can come pretty much from all over the world. Just, uh, just jotting down countries of people that I know at the moment. Uh, China, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, Sudan, Eritrea, Albania, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, um, Kenya. So I think you can say people, asylum seekers is kind of a lump, lumpy sort of term, but people come, have all sorts of different backgrounds, all different sorts of life stories, all sorts of different reasons why they um, had to leave their homes. Uh, in, in sort of terrible circumstances and try and make their way to this country. Um, so how do people get here? I think as probably you, you, you well know, people come by all sorts of routes. The, uh, the route by rubber dinghy across the uh, English Channel had a lot of publicity last year, um, mainly due to the fact that uh, other routes have been made so difficult, it's sort of a last resort. But equally, people do come by regular routes. So some people arrive at Heathrow Airport and go to immigration. 
and claim that asylum was immigration, or as, as well publicised, people may uh, hitch a, 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 a lift on a, on a truck crossing from Calais or from Wistrom from northern France. Mm -hmm. So all sorts of routes that people get here, some very difficult, um, some relatively benign, arriving by, by airline. Um, I think this is the time to point out that there's no such thing as an, as an illegal asylum seeker. You see lots of terms used in the newspapers about illegal immigrants and so forth. Um, but by definition, if you're seeking asylum, you have a right to seek asylum under the Refugee Convention of 1951 that um, the UK is a party to. So if you're seeking asylum, by definition, you're not illegal. Um, though often when people arrive, um, they are treated uh, rather as criminals, which is, uh, is not correct. Um, and the reason that people um, have this sort of illegal tag is people who have to arrive by irregular, so-called irregular routes um, on, on trucks or, or rubber dinghies or whatever. Um, that's because the regular routes are so difficult in this country. The government provides very few safe um, regular routes for people to arrive. It's clearly very hard for people if they're leaving their home country under duress to catch a conventional airline flight. Um, so that's kind of not, not an option that many people have. Um, so when they arrive, um, they need to um, apply for asylum as soon as possible on arrival. So really the best thing is to arrive at the port of entry and claim asylum. Um, people are then sent, they then would have an initial screening, screening, an initial screening interview with immigration officers, which just takes down their initial details and their reasons for applying for asylum. Um, what happens then is a lot of people then go to uh, Cardiff, or taken to Cardiff for a few weeks. So they're taken to accommodation in Cardiff and, and processed by the uh, the uh, immigration authorities. Um, after a few weeks in Cardiff, they get uh, dispersed or have typically been dispersed to major cities. So there's about nine major cities in the UK mm -hmm. uh, where people seeking asylum are dispersed to by the Home Office. And Southampton is one of them. Um, so they would typically uh, go to uh, Home Office accommodation uh, in a house at Cow Share in Southampton and Typically at any one time, there's maybe about 200 people who are in process of seeking asylum who are living in Southampton. Um, alternatives, as, as Michael was mentioning, alternatively, as we've seen in the news lately, um, because of the large numbers of people um, who are not getting through the asylum system very quickly at the moment, um, there's been accommodation in former barracks for our barracks such as Napier at Folkestone or Pen Alley in Pembrokeshire, uh, where large numbers of people have been housed in not very suitable accommodation. Um, so having arrived, uh, they need to get some legal advice. They need to find a reliable solicitor who's an expert in immigration and asylum law. And they need to have um, what's called a substantive interview with the Home Office. <coughs> So at this stage, uh, they'll have been put in touch by an organization called Migrant Help, who are um, a semi-independent contractor to the Home Office, but they basically they provide a helpline and they provide quite useful uh, advice and help to people who are seeking asylum uh, with interpreters under a contract to the Home Office. Um, people then need to have their substantive interview uh, which is kind of the main interview which they have with uh, Home Office uh, Immigration. Um, that interview might last for hours, and it's a very um, grueling experience for most people uh, because the Home Office interview will come with an attitude of disbelief to everything that uh, people are telling them, uh, and will really um, test their story, test their accounts uh, of, of why they're seeking asylum and whether they're their claim is justified. So that's a, a, a very difficult process for people to go through, um, particularly if they're not familiar with, familiar with our 
culture or a way of doing things, um, possibly having trouble with the language. Um, there's at the moment, there's quite a, a big uh, backlog. So the person I'm um, friends with at the moment, he's been in the country for two years and he still hasn't had his substantive interview. So something which was supposedly going to be done in the first two or three months uh, in normal circumstances, uh, due to the backlog of, um, of people being, being seen by the Home Office, um, he's now had to wait two years and he still doesn't have a date. So it's a very difficult situation for people living in limbo. Like that. Um, so generally people, um, some people have quite a quick decision, particularly if it's a refusal. Um, people uh, otherwise might be waiting for quite a long time. And those tend to be the people that we in SWBG are helping because um, their case hasn't been straightforward and they're in limbo for a long time living in Southampton. Um, uh, life is very boring for people who are not allowed to work and they have to live on £39 a week. So there's not a great deal that they can do. Um, and they always have the threats hanging over them that they might be detained and sent to an immigration removal centre. So people who have, um, we've got to know and they've settled in uh, and they're, they've, they've got a bit of a life and they're coming to our coffee mornings and doing things, um, suddenly one day they might be reporting to the police station and instead of coming out again, um, they're kept there. And the first we hear is, ah, now they're in a removal centre and they're about to be deported. So quite a traumatic event. So eventually the Home Office decides on their case and they could be granted leave to remain uh, or they could be refused. Uh, if granted leave to remain, then they're called refugees and they have to find new accommodation uh, within 28 days. Uh, they then register for social security, get a national insurance number and potentially uh, if they're able to start looking for work. So this is another huge challenge that people have from having moved from these months or years of limbo suddenly to be um, turfed out of their accommodation, have to find somewhere else and start, <laughs> start living a life in this country. So if refused, then they may be able to appeal or submit fresh evidence. But at this stage, they're often destitute and they have no accommodation or money. So this is often when people go to the British Red Cross and then um, they might be referred to SWBG for friendship and support. Um, so rather than living, under, living on the streets, um, we then take them on. And if, uh, if their solicitor thinks that they've got a fair chance that actually their asylum claim is, is sort of has a reasonable basis, then we'll take people on and support them for, for a period to help them put in a fresh claim. It's conscious time's running on. I've only got through the first page. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to rely on Michael to stop me when you've heard enough and we can cover other things under Q&A. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to move forward to uh, see if I've got a super slide here. Yes, so I don't think I'm even going to try and interpret this. This is a rather glorious slide that comes from the Home Office. The Home Office, the, the House of Commons website, uh, the library of the House, House of Commons has very good briefing papers. Um, this one about asylum is, I found very interesting. It's got all sorts of um, summary of statistics. Uh, and what this is showing from the left-hand side to the right, from 1994 to 2018, it's showing the flow of people seeking asylum from different countries. And um, I think it's probably going to be a bit tough to explain it all to you on screen. But it's um, if you go to the House of Commons website and you look for um, the asylum briefing paper, um, you find quite a lot of statistics and information like this to look at in, if you've got the interest to do it. Uh, I thought I'd just give you a summary of global statistics. So at the end of 2019, almost 80 million people were forcibly displaced across the world. About three quarters of them are living in countries neighboring their country of origin, which are often developing countries. 
uh, about two thirds came from just five countries, uh, from Syria, from Venezuela, this is around the world, not necessarily to the UK, from Syria, from Venezuela, from Afghanistan, from South Sudan, and from Myanmar. And 50% of refugees across the world are children. Um, in the UK, the largest number of asylum applicants came from Iran, Albania, Iraq, Pakistan, and Eritrea. In the UK, in 2019, there were five asylum applications for every 10,000 people resident in the UK. Uh, across the EU, the average is 14 asylum applications for every 10,000 people. So the UK is well below the European average, and we actually rank 16th, uh, sorry, 17th uh, in terms of um, the number of people who seek asylum uh, in our country compared to the rest of Europe. Um, there's, as, I, as I mentioned, there's quite a huge backlog has built up in asylum applications, and with this backlog is actually um, growing um, before COVID. So in 2019, um, there are about 36,000 people seeking asylum in the UK. At that stage, there are about 23,000 whose um, outcome of their application wasn't known. So there were 23,000 people waiting uh, to, um, to have a decision on their case. And uh, the, the numbers of people waiting a decision has grown quite dramatically. So um, from, from about um, over 20,000 in 2018, uh, it's now 50,000 people are waiting for a decision. And in the same period, the number of people waiting more than six months has risen from 12,000 to 36,000. So I'd say a, a, sort of a substantial portion of, if not the majority of the people at SWG and VG are helping have been waiting, as I said earlier, for well over six months, typically a year or two years. So very large numbers. Um, I'm conscious of the time here, so when you've heard enough of me, yeah, you, you so can break I, off, but I'll just carry on if you're happy or uh, you I think it would be great uh, if we could uh, perhaps now entertain a few questions, and then if you have anything else to add, you can maybe add in between questions because we have a very interested uh, lot of people. So I'm going to stop. I'm sure you have. I'm conscious I've barely touched on SWVG and what, what we do. I've been, been 